Hey, what it is, it's Jay here from Gank Ranks. Screen A for Adorables, get at it. I'm bringing you a very special video today. I'm trying, I'm trying not to laugh, but I love you, Colonel Sanders. I think you're looking good, Dating Simulator. I, I don't know, man. This is, uh, figured it'd be interesting. I don't know. Figured I could talk over this. So I guess we're gonna start. Ah, oh, wow, all right. Well, already getting with the personal questions. Look at that. And I should have had some food. You know what I should brought? I should have ordered KFC before I was playing this game. Really like get into the mindset of this game. So you sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could have an awful okay, wait, or you could wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is then no time to sleep in. Let's do that one. Wow, holy, I don't know who has an annoying alarm clock that bad. I guess that would get you up in the morning, wouldn't it? Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School and Academy for Learning. I really like these shoes, look at that. I think a pair just like that. Your mind begins to wander. Ooh, tennis, tennis club, Ooh, pearls. Uh, I do like pearls. Is this BTS up here? Look at that. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. Uh, you need, need to take it seriously or you allow yourself to daydream a bit thinking about the future. Uh, for this playthrough, I think I'm going to go with the take this seriously. I better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist, teeth brushed, hair combed, pits deodorized, nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head out to class. I like this poster. Ooh, you just what you need to get your blood flowing. Look at the steam coming off of that. Standing in the quad. What does that mean? Like a... Like a lawn? Mall? I don't know. You gaze upon the magnificent university cooking school academy for learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. <laughs> She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. I like, this, I like her hair color. Look at that, Miriam. Good morning, Jay. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of your lives? Do I have caps lock on? Why is my name in all caps? Is that supposed to be in cap? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited. A little nervous. Okay, okay. A lot nervous. What the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but... Well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Oh, she's already crying. She's been on the screen for like... 10 seconds. Classic Mary, raised by a master chef parent, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quick sandbox. Quick sandbox? Who? It's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. Well, there is some amount of voice acting in this. What does this do? Oh, well. But with University Cooking School, Academy for Learning's famous three-day only semesters. I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. <laughs> three-day only. Is that, does that even, I don't know, whatever, in case you can call whatever you want a semester. Sweet girl Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. <laughs> it's a hard mannequin. You know, none of the mannequins I made out with, I, I never made out with a mannequin. She pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief. Yeah, sure. I talked to my friend. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares I've been trying to forget. I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were des destined for great things. Remember that card with fancy looking tower and that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduating, and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt co cooking. Ooh, I can't talk today. In no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. I, f mm, I would... I'd like to feel her nerves. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Yes, yeah, she does. Look at those. Look at those. Beautiful. And the bow to match. Love it. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. Oh, the hand here. Uh, I cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Not my custom engraved measuring spoons. 
It's Ashley. Ash. I don't. I'm sure that means Ashley, but it's like uh, Ashley. Your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Look at that fang. She a vampire. Red eyes, vampire. Might as well be. Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. What an insult. You leave Jay's shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Oh, I'm really self-conscious about my shins. Don't make fun of them. You can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. I mean... If anyone here knows the perfect shins look like... Looks like... Wow. Look like it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Yeah, don't make fun of my shins. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His parents are... His pants. His pants are so tight. His pants are so tight. You can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. <laughs> Van Van? You ring ring? Oh my god, he's fantastic. Look at that. I like... Is this just like a partial chef suit? He just has like the one side. What is going on there? You've never... You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. She's fed up with it already. What is going on? Oh, that's not a that's not a bow or anything. That's his his hair is in the shape of a star. <laughs> How do you I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas now? I mean, I would. I mean, like, I assume that if you have enough handwork to make that star, that you could cook anything, or maybe hire us as professors. You're, you amateurs can learn a lot from us. But the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Psh, see you later, losers. As he approaches the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. <laughs> what was that noise? Is he also a vampire? All right. Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Oh, he's got also haunted by ghosts, apparently. He just spits one out. It says X. Is it? Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. <laughs> like, could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name, name tag includes his Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm Jay. So, are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks. Oh, look, there's a ghost again. He's just full of ghosts, you know? That's what I say when, I'm like, strange white stuff comes in my mouth and with that the young man walks into the building ahead of you is it just me or is he kind of cute i think it's just you yeah miriam i think it's just you you both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building who's that <laughs> i feel like i should know who that is you stand at the edge of the room unsure where to sit other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting only obnoxious noise than a dog with a spatula in his mouth. A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at a podium in the front of the class. Adorable. Yeah, look at that. Look at his eyebrows. Oh I've never been one to have crutches on my teacher, but I think this is my. I think I'm going to break that record now. I think I have a crush on my teacher. Sprinkles. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. CEO. He's. Not only is he an instructor, but he's, <laughs> he's a master chef and a CEO. Please, please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. <laughs> what? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Well, I don't know about you, but my favorite way of cooking has always been doggy style. So... Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. 
Are these like 3D animated petals coming? Yep. He walks in. Oh, wow. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. You, who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. Look at that. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, I love the Colonel. It's like an like angsty anime character. It's wonderful. It's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Before he can finish his sentence... Please call me Colonel. <laughs> Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of death. Suddenly the room is sweltering. Ooh. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you and you're not entirely wrong. Ugh. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. <laughs> that laugh. Maybe we should open the window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. But look at her. She is like about to like Super Saiyan 2. Uh, just all those flames. And he hasn't moved at all. He's just loving life. Look at that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with you with all your really weird insults? Besides, when Jay sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. Oh, thank you. You know, I think it makes my. I think it really makes up for my weird shins. You take a moment to clean yourself up. It's a good thing you don't forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, 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 sweltering. <laughs> Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. I love the series' eyes get. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. <laughs> and when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Broom cooking. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. He like a raptor? What is going on? Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everything, everyone had a good summer. I really miss. Quiet. <laughs> late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue, you're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? Remember me? I'm, you're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Oh, he's so angry. The tail, eyes, look at that. Let there be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the students Sprinkles is referring to who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. I like there's pie back here. Look at that. It's important for any culinary student to know pie to like the 10th disciple place. <laughs> what is going on? Is that like a little bit of grease coming out of his uh, chest hole? I don't. The class burst in a laughter. Oh my god, he's like demented. He's got a little hat. That's so cute. Oh, clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had her. Oh wow! You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before. But Sprinkles' reputation for being smart is tough. Smart but tough is well known. Man, I'm gonna try to not. I can read. I swear. Also, what time is it? Like twelve twenty on the clock back there. A long like starts in the middle of the day. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? Hmm. Let's. Ooh. Beef treat, rubber ball, chicken snack. I like that. Beef treat, rubber ball, chicken snack. Beef treat, rubber ball, chicken snack. Let's go beef treat. You reach beneath your apron and return with a small bit of beef jerky in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. Oh, no. Beef? Are you trying? It's a KFC. What? Oh, I'm dumb. Beef, are you trying to give me a heart attack? I would never eat that. There's even a chicken on his pedestal. You clearly do not belong here. Please remove your apron and then remove yourself from class in this school. 
quick how long was that all right well i guess like if we're gonna okay oh okay so we start we won't go too far back was this triangle here before all right we're gonna, gonna kind of like s skip through most of this um i think the skip button what does this go to oh it just does the same thing as a double click i guess i can skip through faster Man, he needs more screen time. I haven't seen him enough. Look at that. He's all fancy. He's got a little, little uh, pocket square. It's adorable. She's freaking out. I'm sure you can hear my clicking. I'm just trying to get through this. He's so cute, though. Look at the little thing his face. Oh, he got his little hat. That's just his little eye. That's adorable. Aha. <laughs> Like even her dress, like, she's got so much power that it's like she's lifting her skirt. That noise is uh, slightly more annoying. I don't really know what this button's doing. It like makes a lot of clicky noises when I scroll over it. It's so angry. Look how short his paws are. And why he's so sad. Oh. <laughs> his eyebrows are kind of hard to read. Are they up? Are they down? Who knows? I didn't notice his smile last time. What is going on? Chicken snack it is. It's his favorite. See? It's a KFC game. I should have known better <laughs> than to try to give him beef. Well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for new for a new star. Wow, why can't I talk today? For a new star student. Shouldn't there be like an A or I don't know. Alright. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving her hands slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. Oh, delicious. I would lick my hand in that case. You see the other students lying your jealousy jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, then they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog shit flavors on them at all times. That's really like a, in in life, like like sure if you're in the office, or whatever you can get by by not having any dog treats on you. But the rest of your the rest of your day, you should always have dog treats on you. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Jay, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. You know I'm interested. His... Oh, it says about 12, 20. That's okay. Two good options, but which will you choose? Someone like 12, 15, but I don't know, it's kind of at an angle. Ooh. Miriam does like my shins, but... I think the goal of this game is to try to uh, smash Colonel Sanders, otherwise known as Colonel Smashers. Uh, you move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It's, it's, it's a little, little off. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me the seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can and do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. Look at <laughs> Is he buffer all of a sudden too? He's jacked. Look at the hands. Look at his, his hand. Is, are his hands bigger than his face? <sighs> all right. That's so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast. It's time for a pop quiz. Yay, a quiz about me. <laughs> All this hassle dirty. I noticed the stains and stuff, and he's, I guess, oh, the X is mi the missing buttons. Got it. Um, what are you carrying with him? This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. 
train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Uh, I'd argue that if you're putting it in the oven, it doesn't really matter that much. The heat kills germs, but really, extremely. That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to feather. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized fork, a meat tenderizer, or a spork? If you're talking about like wh which most efficient, like a fork can carry an entire, an oversized fork can carry an entire meal, so I'd say that's pretty efficient. But I think the answer you're looking for is a spork. That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat. A pancake that looks like a silly face. Uh, camel meat's always made me feel better whenever someone's broken my heart. Um, but he doesn't like beef, and that makes me think that he would not also not like camel meat. So, pancake looks like a silly face. I'm gonna say anything. That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? Of course he's the best boy. Look at that. That's right. Look at that, perfect score. Wow, be honest, did you cheat? You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Oh, look at that, look at that, little hearts. Oh. See, his hands aren't bigger than his face there. Well, I guess maybe he's fully extended his fingers. Hot diggity, Jay. You just scored some major Colonel Smashers points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. I would assume that lunch is the most important meal or important, most important uh, time block in a, col in a college based around culinary school, but I never attended culinary school, so. These are just empty bins. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. The Stewart cafeteria. Like Martha Stewart, Martha, Martha, wow. Delicious, uh, delicious, oh wow, I can't talk today. A delicious bang rinse bang wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? You still got that same, is that the same juice box the whole time? Was he just, was he finished it and just scared to throw it away? I also haven't noticed any trash cans in the school, so maybe that's his problem. No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. He's angry. This is like, what is going on with the, what is, what is his hand doing? He looks like, um, a guy from a scary movie. They're like, my germs. Hey, I was, it's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I, shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said, shh. In honor of the new semester, I've prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. I bet it's chicken. That must be the smell I smelled. That's what you would smell, Miriam. Indeed, that smell. Look, they're back to giant hands, McGee. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the tr rumors true? Is this? <laughs> back with the steam. Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. I've never seen chicken glimmer, but I don't know, just haven't had like uh, piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken. What a novel concept! <laughs> Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, "Stop thinking and start eating." For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What, you think that we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pasha, nah, my dude, nah. I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is uh, poison. I got him. Look how fantastic he is. This whole Raphael look going on. Oh, what did happen to his face there? He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. 
You wait to see what singer Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. She's got chicken on her stockings. Dear diary, today I smell something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Oh, please. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any, I'm mixing up my voices here. <laughs> I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow white. He starts contorting his face as he tries. Oh, wow. He doesn't have any ghosts coming out of him, Pop. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. She kind of has, like, uh, this weird, like, chef plus anime plus KFC uh, employee uniform thing going on. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. His star went up. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. I like bucket in quotation marks as if there's like this, it doesn't qualify as bucket. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders food transport you to another dimension. What is going on? Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind a bit and meditate on this moment, trying to identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. <clears throat> well, for at least for this first playthrough, or like getting to the end, I want to try to smash Colonel Sanders. Uh, I want to get up on that Colonel Smashers. So, uh, I feel these top two are the ones that are going to do that. Uh, I think he, he really liked it when I passed that quiz perfectly, so I'm going to go with this first one. I want to do the second one, but you let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? Maybe. Pepper? Too obvious? Oregano? Basil? Maybe. But there's something else. Something dark. Something spicy. You dig deeper. 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 Yes, even deeper still until you find it. Could it be... Was it censored? <laughs> he really did it. How bold. How adventurous to use. You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. A mantle responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you are traveled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <laughs> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune, establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. And his cane comes out of nowhere. Has he just been holding his mind his back the whole time? It's got <laughs> the chicken on it. At least he's got normal fingers. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. It, not really, it's already like, whatever. We've only, we've got two more whole days to get to know each other. Oh, wow, he's like disgusted with me. That wasn't an option. I'd... He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. You feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. I feel like I should be saying, like, I have word. Wow, you'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. And... Definitely isn't the flavor you tested before, so now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe, but you don't tell Colonel Sandals, Sanders that. I almost called him Colonel Sandals. 
While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared while everyone else is still in the cafeteria and decided to look for him. He, we were talking. He just disappeared while we were talking. <laughs> you find Colonel Sanders outside standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. We were talking 30 seconds ago. Like, what do you mean? Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say, the biggest. And only the man with the biggest hands can carry this dream. I, I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. All alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Dang him to show your own strength. I don't wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things out. Be modest but thoughtful. I don't know. Let's go. I didn't think. It, honestly, I didn't think this game would make me think this hard. Like, I figured I'd be like, oh, click, click, click. I didn't. Let's go modest. Oh, I think that was good. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Jay. It's odd seeing my name there. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. Oh, I wish, I mean, I wish it was successful. Wow. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Let's look at this, like, Iron Chef set out. Look at this place. Magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. I want to see Miriam's stuff. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything. Except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Aww. Hey, Colonel. Oh, I feel like we're, like, gonna lose a friend here. I know I picked him first. I would have, I don't know, gone back. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two? That is, that is me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? That was endearing. Sure, Jay. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam's left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Oh, she's not having it. Hello, new partner. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Oh my, two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? I mean, look at that. <laughs> He's so demented. Like, let's go, Clink. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clink today. It's okay. I already ate. <laughs> we just came back from lunch. We all just ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clink is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. Warp, warp, warp. I like it. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clink might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. I would say that's a face. I mean, it's got a, this thing that moves. I don't know what those are supposed to be. Bzz. Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> Clink judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that, he, that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Well, this is a KFC game, so we're going to go potatoes and gravy. I've always been something of a doubt. Look at the more hearts. They were totally getting a Colonel Smashville. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. And gravy? I like that. Oh. I couldn't imagine one without the other. 
Colonel Sanders cast a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'm... Maybe I should get a face cam. Like, I'm getting a little sweaty, a little, like, a little nervous. We're getting real close. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <laughs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is, is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off of my man. What is with this music? What? We're playing Doom? Did someone call for me? Uh, no. Jeez, Van Van. Well, I'm over here crushing Jay's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? What is with this music? I'm kind of digging it. You know, he's crying. But she's insane looking. It feels like a boss fight's about to come on. Kind of don't, don't want to click away. Colonel Sander returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashtale, Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Jay was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I really like the chicken cutouts in her stockings. I don't know if you could make them look that good, but I like it. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha, doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Oh, oh, he didn't like that. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Well, she just like blinked a bunch, like with, like not, this, uh, nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing's clear, she's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. I'm gonna stick with Sanders. I'm here to learn to express my, myself via my cuisine, not bigger with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I, choose, I chose Colonel Sanders and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Jay as my partner for all the, for this activity, and I stand by it. I, well, she's already crying, and this music, I just, it's not stopping. I kind of like it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Jay's natural talent or their loyalty. Oh, that's so nice. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. It, it actually does, you know? Like, it was a real ego booster for me. I really needed that today. Because I've done nothing. You look for sprinkles and hope that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your tension was elsewhere. I made perfect mashed potatoes while looking. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hands. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which he pours a smooth brown gravy smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Oh, it's... <laughs> it's so beautiful. I think I might cry. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Yes, she would. Look at that. I don't really know if I'd call it a uh, smothering. I am a really like, I really like a high gravy to mashed potato ratio. Um, really way high, I mean more like, almost like a one to one, but this'll do. Oh, look at that. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. You two, the two of you stand holding the same spork and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Oh my God. <laughs> I'd smash. 
Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mattress with it. Why is she so happy? I thought you would be something that would upset her. You, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. What? Van Van, do something. Scooping up a finger, uh, fingerful, Van Van tastes a great drink of mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Okay. Is he always combing that star? Hold on right there, Jay. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw in one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Why are you so angry? Doggy, don't be mad at me. Can I have potato face? <laughs> Can I have... Van Van rushes back over a, co a covered dish in hand. What is he doing with this? Is he like gonna Kelly mommy? It's on an axe. <laughs> Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. I'm just a f in just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade for battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. This is a battle axe to for, for my chef? This seems a little like the axe I can I can get behind for a chef to have, but like it's got the spike up here, and then it's coated in spikes, and then I don't know what it would take to put that star in there. Probably a lot of combing. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Fine and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. Oh, he's oh I totally missed that his hair was all messed up. No, don't. Something about this doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was brushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Ooh, no. Too late. It has been eaten. He's not looking good. Oh, wow. His eyes have completely disappeared. I think they're all full of ghosts now. I think that's what's going to happen. This kid's probably going to be a ghost. I uh, think I left something in the oven. What is going on with this hand? I don't. It feels so good. It killed him. He's a ghost. <laughs> and they just put a sheet over him all oh, sad doggy don't be sad everyone step back don't take another bite when you look back at the plate the rest of it is gone do you notice the tip of the tentacle being slurred by a pot's mouth it, he's already filled with ghosts so I'm sure he's fine pop winces in pain for just a moment and then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self is it, who, that's his ghost face killer oopsie Tastes like poison. <laughs> Tastes like poison. He's still got the spatula in his mouth. He never lets go of it. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Strock is frozen, a whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, distorting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite uh, obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm, his ghost is still here. I'm not sure the professor is here making enough money. Me neither, dog. I, especially as a CEO, you should be making a big bucks. Ghost of student. Um, hello. I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. And no one cares. It's just. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What like for real? Oh come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Oh, just in time for Halloween. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not as great, not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Oh, why are these all teared up? Uh, we're getting to Colonel Smashville. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Jay? There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. 
Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. He's he's on the way to be the best chef with the best uh, hairdo on a chef, I guess. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. <sighs> what is with the shape of the jacket? It's like very ball shaped. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you, look at his hair's going, <laughs> what, like, he's, he's, he's hit Super Saiyan 2 at this point. Shut up, I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? <laughs> you can't prove that. His eyes disappeared again, taken by ghosts. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. Back to the... Oh, whoa. The spork monster is here to fight a hero. Look. Oh, I don't like his eyes. I mean, everything else is really gross, too, but... I uh, think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be af be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster. See? What is going on in this story? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. No way. What will you do? Um... Attack? You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upsets Spork Monster. I'm upset now too. I don't want to attack him. He Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. I'm gonna defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. Okay. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure. You do you. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Let's go with the attack. You decide to go on the attack. I have cooked with love. Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. I like these. Spork Monster uses Utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Cook with Love does one damage. Spark Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spark Monster prepares for its ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. Vile, vile villain. Your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. <laughs> is he getting his shirt's coming off? <laughs> his mustache. Man, look at this. I like all the Super Saiyan animations we got going on. Pot pie power pinch. I that's I feel like this is a that's a bad set of words to put into a microphone. Pot pie power pinch does ten damage. Spork monster is defeated. You saved me. Oh god, what is going on? An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. I don't know. I'm gonna go with the Mortal Kombat. No con. No oh wow. No student will ever walk the quad in fear again. This monster messed with the wrong chef. Attack. You ready? Your final attack. You'll never survive my. <laughs> what? <laughs> student debt loan destruction. Student loan debt destruction does ten damage. Spark monster. Spork monster is completely vaporized. Colonel Sanders looks on in awe. You continue to surprise me, Jay. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon close inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. No way. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borko. Borko. Borko, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. 
As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. Oh, he's in our bedroom? I swear, I swear. Um, I'm only a kind of a fan of BTS. The, the poster was a gift. I... I'm sorry. He must have helped you get home in your tired state. You don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. Is that his clothes folded in the bed? You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being folded up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Come on, girl. You can sleep. I got two pillows. The bed's almost wide enough for us both, so we'll have to spoon a little bit. Leave the sporking. You like sporks. I like sporks. We can spork. We just fought a spork monster. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dr Dreams are weird. <laughs> Even Ghost Kid's there. We're riding drumsticks into the night. You wake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? I don't think we're riding chickens into the night, but maybe we will. You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while taking Colonel Sanders cook cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used... I don't, I, I don't know the word there. Pubes? I don't... Paprika? Pa paprika? I can I can speak words. I don't see a computer anywhere. I mean, it could be off screen, but there's a monitor. It's all in one. It's probably an all in one. These hearts are uh, really cute. I had those on my windows growing up too, I think. And then there was a secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with Spork Monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Clank. Oh, it's a good thing that I kind of bail on her the entire story so far. Like him? Like, like, like? I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. She's so confident. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? I'm sure he was. No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to and was also the com and was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. What? He was the convertible? I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University Cooking School Academy for Learning. I like that they say it every single time, with the exception of like the one time they abbreviated it. You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> uh -huh, sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Oh, don't tell her. It's supposed to be secret. However, you don't tell her that you know his second ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie, I think it'd be better if you told her, told her the one that you figured out on your own because then he wouldn't know that Water. a secret ingredient. Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said that it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals, and that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both shared an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. I don't understand. Okay. 
Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? I honestly would have never even, like, brought it up. <sighs> Thank you for doing it. It was Eye of Newt. I know it sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she's definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. Oh, look at them. I was wondering where these are coming from, and it's very evidently this tree that takes up like a third of the screen. <laughs> he's got a horse. It's a beautiful horse, too. Look at those eyes. Love it. And he's got ch chicken saddle. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. Hmm. I don't know. I wouldn't run to him. You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. I don't care what Miriam... Like, honestly, I care what Miriam thinks because she's, like, my best friend now. We're, like, totally all, like, together. But, like, forever. But... Do I have to prove... Surely he'll sweep you up on the back of a stallion and he'll ride away every together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. However, your sudden movement surprises the horse and rears up, kicking you directly in the face. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. I am here to deliver you. Ooh, a J. I'm here to deliver you a message. What's going on? <laughs> Not this guy. It's important that you remember this exactly as I say it. Should we write this down? If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... Before he can continue, you suddenly awake. Aw, oh, jeez. You wake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He rouses you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his natural seasoned musk? Compliment the crap. I don't think I can kiss him yet. We'll do that. Compliment on the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. Maybe you shouldn't be riding a horse to school. Maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. But one thing is for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. <laughs> That's nice to hear. He liked that. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. That's where the bonus points came from? Yeah. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rifles, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way, they're hiding. You know it must be really bad. Like counterfeit, uh, counterfeit, counterfeiting, counterfeiting, counterfeiting? Why can't I pronounce words? Uh, recipe's bad. Experimenting with a restricted ingredient's bad. Summoning a demon bad. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Is there an option where I can fall into this guy? Or Ashley? Uh, well there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Uh, why don't you make like a bee and mine your own wax, honey? I, li <laughs> I like that. Uh, tell them to stop acting immature or act like you're interested in them, but really try and get a closer look. Let's go with that one. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improv improvise an excuse. Ahem. It's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us. You want to learn. God, she's... She's gonna murder someone. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? And he's gone Super Saiyan again. <sighs> I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes... I've never known how to pronounce this word. Panache? Panache? And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book just like the one you found after your, at your encounter with the spork monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van who hides the book behind his back. 
I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. Do you notice that they haven't just been studying the book? They've got Pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. <laughs> We're playing. <laughs> Before you can dig in any, fur uh, any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. BB. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey! Watch hot. Wow. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. I don't know what I have in my mouth there. You watch how you talk to him. You, he didn't do anything. Bzz, womp. Oh, look, he's even... Now his eyebrows are both down, so now I kind of know what's going on. A little steam. I'm glad to see that there's no... It's not a ghost inside of him. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such a language. Not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. That really, like, hurt his feelings. Words. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. She didn't like that. Oof. What are those noises? Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got a lofty career aspirations to focus on. That seemed a little out of... Maybe I can help you with your business plan. That seemed a little pompous and out of character for Colonel. Just then, Sprinkle arrives to signal the true start of the class's day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. Oh, poor puppy. I mean, that must be fast, though, if you can chase a car. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's a scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. Down, boy, down. Off toppin'. I think that's how you pronounce that? Well, I don't know. That command is shouted by Colonel Sanders as Snap Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, I like that his cane keeps coming into play. Without further ado, we'll re review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. <laughs> but you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, it doesn't look too good. Well, Jay? Naturally, this appears to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Oh, I don't... What? I... I don't know. Pepper? A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body's not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever you trip through the universe. How many times am I going to do this? My friend, ooh. This guy again? I'm here to give you an important message, ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... I don't want to cough into the mic. That sounds awful for you. I was saying to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... Cough, cough. Sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through. Cough. To fulfill. Cough. The prophecy. Cough, cough. You must. You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. He's not happy with me. Never was the last of its kind on earth, and now it's gone forever. <laughs> Why would he have it on a platter? You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. 
We all make mistakes. I'm sure you will forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim, and your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. I don't... Uh, demand, that, demand that they stop wasting everyone's time, step up and tell them you're on. I'm going to tell them you're on. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I like that. I'm not the fool, you're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Jay. I like more bonus points for the Colonel Smashers. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Down now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports ring. Sportsing court? Finally, a little sense. He breathed a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Just then, a huge light blasts me in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. A woo. I stand corrected. The hard way builds sol solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. Oh, that's so sweet. Look at that. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. What is going Yes. Oh, I thought that was part of another knife, and we just did, like, knife chucks. No, nope. it is the heart keychain. That's super cute. I would defeat you myself. Yeah, that you had his chicken and you made smash, mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Oh, no. What temperature does the water boil at? 100 degrees Celsius. That's right, but how would you have even gotten into this school without knowing that? Uh, I'm going to try to do this kind of fast. Mm. Winter gets to rub my furry belly. Let that enticing offer motivate you. Oh, it does. It does so much. I don't think you know, little doggy. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herb slices did he say he used? Uh, 11. That's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. <laughs> now that you've gotten some basic steps going on, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Um, trust. That's wrong. Oh no, I'm begging you to get it together. Get it? I'm a dog. It's never the wrong time for some dog jokes. If you're right. Oh, don't vomit. Next question. Classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you you never forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his, on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now we be Katana's energy. So where does it come from? Um, a small town where dreams are born. That's right. This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. A roo. If you try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking, what is the sound of success? Sizzling. What? Don't even get the spray bottle. Next question. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Jay. He's actually cheering you on. He's so sweet. So nice. Which would be awesome, except knowing that he's watching you makes you totally forget what you're doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders on his beautiful horse. Look at it. It's so pretty. How many spoons of gravy will let you fill in traditional, uh, oh no, what? Grr. Well, you're stranded on a desert island with only one desert dessert cookbook. On a, you're stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. Oh no, I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Oh my god. What does that have to do with crafting spectacular French chicken and delicate baked biscuits? Woof, woof. You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixture. As you do, the cat crowd gasps. Eh, yikes. Zzz, pop. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Where? You might not have any hands, but Jay does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. That's an easy way and a hard... There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by doing the easy way. I didn't even choose that. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand in the mixture to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Jay, no. But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's, it's a meat... Oh, wow. I didn't choose that. 
and your hand gets stuck, it's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters, and there's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What I often find what you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. I think everyone stop what you're doing right now, the battle is over. It can't be, I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am the com completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Jay's injury. Oh, sweet dog. You see, Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. Look at that plating. Look at the chocolate drip. These berries are like see-through. I was going to ask Jay to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream, Two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. Oh, that's what those are. And a flower. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. He's not, he doesn't like it. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? Oh, you, he, he. As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Uh, I don't want to fight anymore. I've got a messed up hand. Internalize your anger. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off of your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. <laughs> Man, I hate it when that happens. That happens to me way too often. I should go see someone for that. He's not feeling that. Embarrassed and ashamed about your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad of your loan. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. Why are we so bad? You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? I don't think you failed at anything. That's exactly what I think. Oh. <laughs> well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you, enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. Why are you so sad? I was passionate about life, but I failed as an op... I don't know what that word means. Obst obst obstetrician? Obstetrician? What does that mean? Just a sec. I'm totally not Googling it. I'm Googling it. Still don't know how to pronounce it. Abs, obstetrician, a physician or surgeon qualified to practice in. Abs, ab, the base word of that. Ab, uh, abs, abstretics, man. What a way to let's video is making me feel dumb. I'm playing a KFC dating simulator and it's making me feel like an idiot. I don't appreciate it. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule hand handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my business partner to a gunfight. What? What business? And I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rival. He survived for a while anyhow. What is this backstory? I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. What? Was that just like an abbreviated history of the colonel? Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. 
I resolved, I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him, a burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Oh, God. <laughs> Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a, threat, a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before you prepared for the worst. It's the Spork Monster. Gorko the Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. Is anyone else feeling a bit of deja vu? I'm sorry, Gorko, but I could have sworn we already battled you last night. That was Borko, my twin, and I, Gorko, eh, am here to avenge them. Are you stronger than Borko? Well, we're twins, so no, not really. We're pretty much exactly equal in every way. Why do you ask? Colonel Sanders smirks. He's already on the same page as you. It's just that we beat Borko pretty easily, and I, so I don't think I, you have much of a chance. Not to mention, I feel really guilty about that. If I could take it back, I would. I think what Jay is saying is, we can't, can't we just be friends? Life's too short for making enemies. I suppose. We really don't need to fight. I just that uh, I've got these pointy teeth and claws. All the better for enjoying tasty foods. Surely you like to eat, don't we all? Of course I do. Oh, he's so happy. I still don't like his eyes, but... Inspiration strikes and you come up with a quick idea. Chomp on this. You toss a biscuit into Gorko's open mouth and he devours it in one gulp. This one's not steaming, though. That means it's not as good. Delicious. You're much nicer than the evil students who once upon a time turned me into this creature who stands here today. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a chihuahua, but I was still a student at this school. Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spellbook cast a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. A magic spellbook? Precisely. Borko used to have a copy, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you respect it. Oh, he's crying with all of his eyes. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such a dark evil and ma dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. <laughs> it sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Jay, together I'm sure we can defeat them. What? I don't know if that face speaks confidence. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. He's got a hideaway? A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Should we finish class? We went to lunch and then we bit, we, we ditched the rest of the school. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, kind of open floor plan. It looks like a, I don't know, security camera built in a picture frame. Uh, beautiful mountainside. I'm loving this uh, fireplace with its dedicated, um, like stainless. I'm assuming some kind of like stainless steel uh, chimney. Is that, it looks like a chicken on that candle. I don't know what that is. Is that some kind of comb? I like the chicken statue. Pictures of kernels. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you ever been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what your what dish might, what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? I'm going to reveal it. I think it is a real bonding moment for us. I'm liking this camel. You decide that you're as, you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. I'm glad that this one isn't steaming, because I you ever had steaming cabbage? It's not a it's not great. What? The shredded cabbage dish glints in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. <gasps> Magnificent.
Interesting. Together you chow down the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. <laughs> you can offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be a perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the kernel. I wonder what this thing is. Yep, it is a comb. A lock of silver hair is woven to the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair there isn't just silver in color. It's actually made of spun silver. Tap it on an item. <laughs> okay, well, let's go over here. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range behind, beyond. Just then the ghost of student pops up. No. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I've never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost of student is swept out with the breeze. Check out this candle. Scented candle. It's got the little tie. A scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? No, it's one of these secret recipe ingredients. It's... What is that? Tap in, on an item to discover more about the kernel. I'm going to stop saying that. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic. It's real. Taxidermy? Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Tap on it and discover more with the colonel. Oh, I don't, should I go over there? What's this thing? This is where he keeps a secret recipe. You think for a moment. What number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, safe open. Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? No, it can't. Don't do that. Don't try that. Stay close to Loker, a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, here lies the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and mustache combo he sports, he figures that this must be the Colonel Sanders himself. He's so cute. That chicken's got a lot of, like, no meat on the, most of the bone. He's got the same glasses. I don't know if anyone's had glasses for more than a couple of years, but they don't hold up. It surprises somebody that's, like, attached to your body. It doesn't heal. Uh, would break. That or maybe it's a drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a big picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded, am I right? The photo appears with Colonel Sanders, except that he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices. One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be uh, cheersing them. I don't see that at all going on in this picture. You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my my friend Pete is. I love this music. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually bone this out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket. You forget, You forgot to take it off. You decide now is your moment to make a big move. You tell him you're cold, you fess up and tell the truth. Um, yeah, honesty, probably. You confess. I think I've developed feelings for you. <laughs> Yay. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Yes, Jay? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence. 
Oh, look at this dream sequence. Oh, it's so cute. They're all on chickens. You wake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. In some jurisdictions, isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the side of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. Oh, look at that. This one is steaming. Beautiful. Look at that melting butter. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Flatter him. You know, I think we might make it a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner. That's not it. Corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner, could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused about your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. What about class? What's the last day of grad like about to graduate? There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning awaits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I, because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just, but now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. I really like this B story a lot. Sure, but you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. He's so happy. Of course, I told him, you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. <laughs> but he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends. But things quickly spiraled out of control. What? The first date, skydiving? Did she just say skydiving is it the typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? And now I'm not really sure where we stand. We don't, you don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too, back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional con connection? Wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole... Colonel Sanders' obsession to focus on school. If obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. And a short, after a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. Aww. I guess we did lose. Miriam. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, great. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. He sprinkles is a dog and a treat. You can get your swirly dipped, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. <laughs> There's that horse that Colonel Sanders rides at school. But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You know what I'm saying? She, she gets me. You've got some nerve, Jay, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Now you're twisting my words and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixture and accident makes you wince in pain. Doesn't look like you can go cooking on like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally, I like the pun. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Jay, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing doing complimenting her but what about the flavor of my delicate warm gooey chocolate sauce it was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received that's a lot of words to say it was bland excuse me jay 
I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. Oh, wow. I can't, I'm not giving choices here. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Jay. What just happened? Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by the interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's that book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open a page to cover arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use a spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is, a, that is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe a tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. I'm not going to do that. Take your friend's advice, put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for the students to arrive. He's so cute. I'm going to dress up one of my dogs like this. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose crunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. He reached for some old homework to give him as a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. I'm going to wait. Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When he follows Casey, a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never to come back here, Terrence. I'll destroy you, Terrence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't see any, say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Ahem, I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Jay, for reminding me to double out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, well, before we can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills into the clash. Sprinkles are interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save her for after class. <laughs> you think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak to Clank's language of mechanical noises. Or, But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan, Jay and Jay forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Beep, whir. And then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off cliff for all I care. Sand beep. Clay begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gap in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Beep, bzz. Oh, whoa, what is going on? What is happening? What is coming out of his mouth? At least it's not ghosts. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that clank. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, is not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pal pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate, but we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. Trademarked. It's trademarked. I'm still working on that title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. Before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Whoa. Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug. I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success Fit City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. 
Of course not. Well, maybe sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a branch big enough for both of us and whoever else you want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person. You shouldn't settle for the first someone to show you a little interest anyhow. Yes, right, Miriam. You deserve someone special. Look at you. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm not going to make a very... I'm going to make a very special soup. I like to give Miriam my special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea on how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge, a test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. A chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his eviler counterpart, Ash Chalet. As planned, you're going to run through a quick test of, of a recipe you've been working on. Jay's famous chicken pot pie. That's not trademarked. Why isn't it trademarked? After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Why are there petals? What? We're in a kitchen. This is unsanitary. Jay, what are you doing here? There's still time before the exam, final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who was hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick, it, stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Uh, ignore it like there was no sound at all or fess about your practice dish. I feel like if I ignore it, I'm going to let it burn and then it's going to want to get nega points with him and I'm going to cause a fire or something and I'm going to break my other hand or something. So I'm going to fess up the practice about my practice dish. Okay, okay, you got me. That worked out. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My noise can smell pot pie from 400 yards. How would you test that? How would you test that? Don't. It, 401 yards, like 400 yards, but 401, four, 401? I can't smell it. I can't smell it. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less. I feel I like how like every time that I make fun of it, fun of this game, the next comment it like acknowledges it. But you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell. Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can smell that it was made with the heaping help of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Uh, thanks, Colonel. I don't know what that flash was, but... Colonel's a pull-out man, in case you guys were wondering. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lay down the ground rules. There are no rules, except that, ex that is, except to cook with everything you've got. There comes... God, why does this look so, like I this game has so much more than I expected like I'm drawn to the story I've had to google some things the music like I want the soundtrack this is how I'm gonna drop to work from now on you step up for the cook-off of a lifetime you decide that a mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory meanwhile both Van Van and Ashley are preparing wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. <laughs> She's so cute. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing it, harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe registered fried chicken. Look at that. The, the intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. I'm going to bring it to 11, though, folks. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders spatters the chicken as it levitates through the fire, uh, through the air. Egg wash! Miriam fiercely injects her ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, Baster Blaster. Miriam, I'd really like to give you my best friend, Baster Blaster. Bam flexes his front pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid! Ashley scoops her past pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Who would you admit that in a cooking move? Even Clank gets in on it. I didn't know he could speak. 
five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? It's the singularity, as it was foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self-destruct. Bandan quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out of the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. You should take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic. I'm going to do it the hard way, because that's what the colonel said. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Oh, look at that. I believe in you, Jay. Miriam notices, too. And I've always believed in you, Jay, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cooking time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's a secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up, and where in the world did she get an eye anute from? That boiling pot explodes, and sending Miriam flying backwards. The moderate noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve the Spork Monster. Steve? Wait, what happened to Gorko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Gorko had the day off, but you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition? I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the Grimmeyer stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally sounded me, huh? Huh, yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing me some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country. You can feel spork monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class when I woke up. You toss a serious stare at Steve, and he takes the hint. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know what you could ever come up with. You summon extra power from deep within with, within yourself, or give up and drop out of culinary school. We're gonna summon extra power, because you could do that. Everyone else has gone Super Saiyan 2, and I'm trying to hit up 3, you know what I'm saying? I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. Look at that. Look at that. I'm Super Saiyan. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Jay, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You return to my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which you would be super useful because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear Jay. You may have suffered from some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned this his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What, what about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. <laughs> Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicate fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, something unexpected, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. With time expired, it's a moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. Um, a handful of students stand tall, but, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, clank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Hee <laughs> hee, I'm flying. 
It sounds like it's coming from the broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like, I think, yeah, wedgies when you serve something, you use lettuce as an alternative to something in a dish. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCS AL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks, pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word beep or other... Uh, not, uh, oh god, I've never been... I can always say this word, but whenever I'm presented with it, I can't ever pronounce it. Onomatopoeia? There we go. But there's none. Somehow you must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please, collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Oh, three days. Well, I, yep, there it goes. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I would made tender udon noodles in a savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny... Narutomaki, I spy a float in its itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, Chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? Oh come on, I'm not the I'm not the one of the dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much, it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus, rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured in, into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed, she gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Jay, for helping me believe in myself. Fan fan, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made uni over smooth egg custard and an axiom urchin gel topped with caviar. This school can afford to do stuff like this. All right. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different color type of urchin? Urchin? Yes, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof, woof. Please be, please be gentle with my cuisine. I forget what voice I was using for him. Grrr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch, my tongue. The rest appears to be having allergic reaction to this thing. I can't eat this. It keepeth, poketh my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of meals could make, a dif make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van, Van does not go gentle with the night. Disqualified? For glamour? Don't discount sympathy. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles gracefully laughs over a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. He said there's only four students left, but that... We just saw three, and then there's still me and uh, Colonel, because he doesn't know that we've combined dishes yet, I don't think. Orange Blossom Turkish Delight. I already read this. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I ask you to please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got to toast? Got toast in your ears or something, Jay? I told you, it's a display piece. Actually, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley, Ashley storms off to the 
rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become, has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. <laughs> Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this. This thing. And completely blow me away. I'm 49 dog years... In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its majestic fragrance. When they gaze upon a mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Everyone declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, where are we? Oh, we're back in the Martha Stewart. We're back inside Martha Stewart. That's one of my favorite places to be. Uh, everyone has graduated. The students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. Really multi-purpose. I feel like a school that was that big it would have like a dance hall or like a conference hall. that They wouldn't have to repurpose the cafeteria, I feel like, but... It does look nice, like chandelier. The cafeteria has been completely redecor redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house! Ow, 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 woo. You know that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who knew? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. What are they wearing? I didn't think they should get. I didn't think they would go more revealing with her. He's kind of like thick. So was he. <laughs> so was he. So was the dog. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at, allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together. It's the spork monster. He has totally mellowed out. Everyone. The spork monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, the party monster. I don't think he would balance on sporks. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to spork. Sorry, party monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found- I like this outfit. It's so cute. Uh, romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? I wonder who it'll be. It's Pop. He's run late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see Persh atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had to mail it directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And now we get a new wing on, on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. <laughs> the music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew it knew it this whole time. I'm sure you did, Miriam. I'm sure you did. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I have just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figure out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's, matur Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear that she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Look, more, more petals. More like petals everywhere. It's play, like, who... I feel bad for the janitor to go around and clean up all the petals. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Oh, it's like the casual look. I like it. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. 
I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on the delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Jay. I couldn't help but wonder. Was our final exam team up purely an act of strategy carried out by two cunning chefs, or was it something more? I'm afraid I can't answer that question directly. Instead, I'd like to ask you a question of my own. May I have this do si -do? Colonel Sanders extends his hand to you, and you feel a surge of energy jump off the tip of his fingers. His hand, the hand of a master chef. So dedicated to the craft of fine cookery. So tender, yet refined. So milky smooth, fingers like finely battered drumsticks, turned in flour, soaked in buttermilk, and dusted with exotic spices. But they do not reach for tongs, a knife, or even a spork. Tonight they reach for you. And through our feet may tire of dancing, I believe this is just the beginning of our steps together. This is so cute. Colonel Sanders, I... Will you not only join me on the dance floor, but in the kitchen as my co-chef and partner in both business and in life? You gasp, could it be? Is he really saying? I hope so. I like totally. Me and you together? Ever since I met you, my dream has changed. It's not enough to simply open the world's greatest chain of fried chicken restaurants. No, even then, my life would be incomplete without you by my side. So what do you say, partner? I say, I love you, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we're gonna smash and uh all right well i guess it takes back to the back to the main menu so that was this is going to play all right so that was i love you colonel sanders a finger looking good dating simulator um I really don't know what to think or what to do with my life at this point, but if you'd like to see more, let me see some other possible endings. Uh, just let me know in the comments. Uh, again, I am Jay from Gank Ranks. If there's kind of material you'd like to see, don't forget to hit that like or hit that subscribe. And if there's anything else you want to see us play, uh, leave in the comments. If it, is, if it is a game, we will consider playing it. Uh, and so with that, uh, out.